I started hearing a noise. And it sort of sounded like running water. So I kept going, and lo and behold, the creek had enough water in it that there was a flowing waterfall cascading down on these jet black rocks just coming out the side of this mountain. And it only went down a couple hundred meters until it sort of sank into underneath all of the, the rocks of the creek bed. So it was flowing underwater all this time. So I hiked all the way up to the waterfall and it was truly magnificent. There's like an energy in the air just from all the negative ions from all that moving water. And I remember just sitting down for like 10 minutes, the water flowing behind me, the view into the forest in front of me with the filtered light coming down through the super tall cedar trees. Not a single sound of human activity anywhere. And it just felt so good. This is not on the map and nobody knows about it. And just to have that ability to be somewhere like that and experience it, I think is really special. And that's what I'm gonna to try to share today. No parking lot, no path. There's a little highway pull out where nobody ever stops. I decided to have a look up this creek. It's a dry creek at the bottom. And what do you know? I mean, look at those trees. They're at least a hundred feet tall. What an amazing place. So basically, the long story long is uh, I was out gold mining. I was, I don't know how long, eight, nine hours away from home. And just the way things worked out was I pretty much ended up driving home in the afternoon and there was no way I was going to make it home in time for sleep. So about a half an hour west of Revelstoke, I'm just, I'm looking for some place to pull over, anywhere to pull over. I'd seen this highway pull out there before, so I saw it coming up, I pulled over and I ended up camping right there. And it was actually an incredible night because nobody else was there. The weather was just perfect like it was humid it was moist and not too hot not too cold but I basically just pulled on over crawled into the back of the vehicle and had a great night's sleep and this is where I woke up that morning so I just wasn't ready for the adventure to end just yet so I had a decision do I cross the road and dip a pan in this creek or do I just get comfortable, get back in my vehicle, and drive the rest of the way home? And for whatever reason, it was first thing in the morning, I was a little cold, I didn't really want to do anything. But just when I opened the car door to get out, stretched a little bit, took a breath in, it was that humidity in the air, just the smell of the trees, the wilderness that is British Columbia. And I had to do it. I had to go see what was in that creek. So I grabbed my gold pan, I crossed the road, and in my third pan, I found a little chunk of gold. So, the next time I was out, I went to that creek to see maybe if I could pan it some more. And there was no water in it. It was completely bone dry. But it was first thing in the morning, so I wanted to give it a shot. I wanted to basically hike up and see what it looked like further into the mountains. So after I was hiking for a little bit and the sound of the highway had completely disappeared, it was just me and the forest. And I heard in the distance running water. So I had to go check it out. Now, directly behind me, Somewhere there, 
you can actually see what might be that waterfall. Well, it's not looking good. This snow is pretty deep. I'm just majorly post hauling and I don't have boots, I'm just wearing my shoes. So breaking through and getting my feet wet in the creek for the next half kilometer. I told you the snow was really deep. And it's hollow underneath because the creek's flowing down there. So it just keeps going. Okay. That worked out, but that was not expected. So with a little more persistence back there, I did manage to get through the really deep snow and into the forest. And then I'm hiking up and I'm hearing a waterfall ahead of me, reach to grab my phone to get a video of it. And there's no phone in my pocket. I'm in the middle of nowhere. My phone's missing. Everything's going through my head like, I need that thing to live. I end up going down and going down and going down. It wasn't until I was almost right back to the highway. Of course, the closer I get, the more I'm concerned that it's just gonna be out here in the middle of nowhere. And I have a white phone. I'm not gonna see it in all this snow. Oh boy. So there it was at the bottom. I got it, I'm excited. And uh, I can hear some running water coming up. I don't know if I'll make it to the big one. We're uh, running a little low on daylight, but I have my phone back. So uh, <laughs> hopefully I can, I can actually get some shots of inside the forest and uh, let you experience what it's like to be here. Even just this, the, uh, the trees are amazing. They're huge. We can still hear traffic. It isn't quite our own special little place yet, but if I can get up a little further from the highway, I have my phone. <laughs> we'll make this work. All right. I don't know if that's it. All right, so I think this is the waterfall I saw before. Now, the one I saw with the drone was clearly much further up than this. But uh, before I could stand right underneath this and have all the water kind of cascading right next to me. But right now I'm on this thin layer of snow on top of the running creek in my running shoes. And further back up there, about one in 20 of my steps would just puncture right through. So I don't want to be spending too much time hiking on top of this to get up any closer. I think this is as far as I'm gonna make it today. That other waterfall is quite a bit further. And while it does look incredible, I'm starting to lose daylight as you can probably tell. So I wouldn't be getting any good pictures of it anyways. But here it is. Water's pouring down. These trees just go up and up and up. Alright, so here I am flying the drone in the middle of the forest. I set it just below the waterfall. I'm trying to have a look up at the waterfall. This is kind of nervous for me right now because I've got an old phone in this video and the connection from the drone controller to the phone is a little bit weak. I love that shot of the cave there, that ice cave. Really cool. But yeah, if that connection were to come apart at any time, which has happened before, the drone's going to return to home, so it flies up to a predetermined altitude. Now, I later learned that I could change these settings, but at this point, I'm kind of concerned that the drone's just going to take off. And as you're about to see, I'm right under some branches of a tree here, so I turn around, and whoa! 
look at that branch and I, I think it just nicks it there so I look up at the drone and I, I try to bring it back down the low light it's having a little difficulty flying itself I'm give myself a little wave there but yeah so I, I made it down out of here and uh, next I really wanted to get a shot of just looking down at everything from up above the trees so I'm going to do my best to do that next Part of what makes this so cool is I am absolutely by myself out here. Middle of nowhere. Just look at this shot as the trees disappear and then you... Spectacular. And even as the light is fading, it's still really cool just where I am in relation to the highway way down there. And then I look back down and I'm like, okay, which hole do I need to get this drone back down into? And I'd sort of lost my bearings a little bit, so I decided, okay, I'll find an open spot and bring it down. And then once I got down into the trees, I was able to sort of pause and hover, and then I looked up from the controller and I could see the flashing lights of the drone about 30 feet away from me. Uh, I was able to land safely and got away with some things this time. Here we are, landing the drone. So there it is. One last quick shot. It's the hidden waterfall and a crazy drone pilot doing what he can to get her done. Alright, getting back down to the highway now. Drones in the bag, brought a little snack along, always a treat. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that was so good. So much better than it should be. Oh. But anyways, I was a little bit intense. <laughs> Probably should not be flying the drone in the trees. But it's one of those things, every time you fly, you risk losing it. And, uh, who am I kidding? Bad idea. See, the, the main problem is uh, there's a connection going into my phone, which is a little bit loose sometimes if you knock it. And when your drone decides to fly home, it goes up to a predetermined altitude. So if I'm underneath some branches, which I was, I tried not to be, then it can't see straight up and it'll crash into that tree. So it was a little bit nerve wracking, but I really wanted to just see what it would look like. But anyways... That's a little bit of an adventure for today. Dusk is setting in. I'm glad that I pushed through that snow at the beginning because when I was finished with the drone, I did just sort of sit up here for a minute, listen to the water, and uh, it's not what I remembered in the summer when there's a little more green, but it's still cool to see that running water in the middle of the winter. It looks cold here. There's a lot of snow, but it may be minus five at, at worst, so it's a good day to be out. All right, if this truck could just be quiet for one minute. Kind of some of the juxtaposition of being out in nature and being back in civilization. There's my car. There's my piece of technology. And there's me. And honestly, it's, it's the memory uh, several years ago of this is what made it so amazing. And having that experience and wanting to come back. And then having done it again... It wasn't quite the same, but listen, that right there, a truck driving down the highway. It's as I started coming closer to the road again, coming out of the woods, that's when everything started coming back into focus and I realized how important it is to actually get out and have these experiences. For whatever it was, I had fun doing it. And what's really interesting is just, you go through so much of your life. Thank you, traffic not even realizing that you're in the traffic. And to have gone out and done this and experienced it, I, I love watching videos on YouTube of people going out and doing and exploring, and it, it gets me through to my next opportunity to do it. And I think that this whole YouTube thing is going to help be an excuse to get out and just to be able to be out here and to film and to share it. 
Hopefully I can do better in the future as far as quality of lighting. It's dusk, I'm filming on a smartphone by the side of the highway. <laughs> but like I've said before, like, subscribe, come back for more. I will try to get some more videos out in 2020.